following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. We're going to start our lecture that uh, will be related with what we saw yesterday. Uh, some students were asking me or asking us, why do we have to watch uh, operas? Why are we watching this opera? Well, the answer is this. We have three brains. In ancient times, uh, Saturday was the day for instruction. In order to instruct the consciousness of all neophytes in different temples. As you see, still in this day and age, Saturday it is a special day for that, but unfortunately, uh, it's used in the wrong way. And uh, usually, are used only for the intellectual center or just for the emotional center. For instance, there uh, in New York, which is uh, Friday night, which is really Saturday, because you know, uh, in accordance with the solar light, the day really begins when the sun sets. That's the beginning of the, the first day of the day. And then when the sun sets in the next day is the end of that day. That's why in Judaism, when they uh, uh, work in Saturdays, is when the sun sets in Friday. That's the beginning of the Saturday. And uh, still, we will say instinctually, a lot of people follow that. And in Friday night, in many cities of the world, what they do, instead of uh, uh, feeding themselves with knowledge or something spiritual, they go to certain rock con concertos or bars in order to engulf themselves in bad things, as you know. The next day, they continue the celebration of Saturday until they get sick, hangover, right? But of course, uh, in ancient times, the masters established that on Saturday, due to the fact that it is Saturn, the Lord uh, uh, that rules the forces of the Holy Spirit, which actually are always active in our three brains. As uh, uh, you remember uh, the, the opera, it begins uh, uh, related with many symbols. But let me tell you that in Gnosticism, we also uh, inform the three brains. As right now, for instance, you are sitting there feeding your intellectual brain. With all the exercises and practices that we do, we are feeding the motor instinctual sexual brain. But we are living outside the emotional center or the emotional brain, which is here in the heart. 
and that is in relation with art, any expression of art. But the best way to feed the emotional brain with information, esoteric information, is with uh, operas or with some art that will be captured by the emotional center and transformed in the right way. For that, of course, we need to inform the intellectual center about the symbols, or about the music, and to listen to that in order to transform and to understand what is the message. Fortunately, we have uh, great masters of uh, music that left for us a lot of work for the emotional center. Beethoven, for instance, uh, different uh, overtures of Beethoven and his music was written in order to express a message for the consciousness. Verdi, uh, for instance, is one of these uh, great musicians that wrote too many operas in order to show the different activities of the ego with the consciousness, according with the esotericism. Because most of these masters of, uh, of music were masons. Like Mozart, for instance, his magic flute is a great teaching for the consciousness. And this is how the knowledge goes through music into your emotional center. And this day and age, unfortunately, as you know, the only music that the, the youth like to hear is rock and roll, that is really noise, with messages that are really rotten messages. That uh, certain bands that say very foul words together with noise and metal music that they call, that really goes and people like, we understand the youth like that because all of us are brain damaged through all the ages. And uh, when we place classical music like opera in this case, some of you ask why this type of things, right? It's very boring sometimes. And it's, we understand it's because the brain, it doesn't work in the right way. But when you start regenerating yourself, then you start understanding this type of message that feeds your soul, which is related with the emotional center because we have to be balanced. If we just storage a lot of intellectual knowledge, reading books, listening to lectures, which are good for the intellectual center, and we start practicing a lot of yoga, a lot of uh, Tibetan exercises and all that that we do here, or they also perform in other religious uh, groups, it's good. But if we leave aside the emotional center, then it's wrong because we have to be balanced. And the only way to uh, feed the emotional center, if we are beginners, of course, is uh, through the classical music. If you want to destroy it, damage your emotional center, well, and then listen to rock and roll and all those type of music that are very popular in this day and age. And obviously that developed very uh, negative uh, psychological sicknesses, psychosomatic sicknesses that uh, all the youth, because they combine that with drugs, unfortunately. But here, of course, we want to teach you the right way to feel your emotional center with superior waves. And one of those uh, great operas written by Wagner brings uh, it's this beautiful message for your soul, for your spirit. And of course, uh, uh, the theme, uh, the lyrics that he ch uh, chose in order to deliver that knowledge is not Christianity, but the philosophy of the Eras, which is the uh, Nordic Bible. Most of us only know the Hebrew Bible, which is a beautiful book. It is the most popular among the Christians. And in the world, we know it's a bestseller. But the other Bibles, we find other Bibles from other groups. 
and one of those is the Era, where you find the story that you see here, of course, written in the Wagner way, with music, which uh, encloses uh, a, a lot of mysteries that we should know how to read. All of us here know how to read uh, uh, symbols. Can any of you tell me or can raise his hand that doesn't know how to read symbols? There is someone here that doesn't know? To read symbols? You are not sure. In, in reality, all of us know how to read symbols. For instance, we use the same symbols in order to communicate. Mm? The most uh, common symbols in order to communicate through written books is the uh, Latin alphabet. Mm? Those are symbols, letters. For instance, the letter A of the uh, Latin alphabet is the same alpha in Greek or uh, uh, Aleph in Hebrew, which are 22 letters that we gave uh, several lectures related with it. So if you know how to combine those symbols, then you can write things and communicate things. So also the, the, the hieroglyphics of Egypt, Mayans, etc., are symbols that if we learn how they sound and related with what, and then we understand and comprehend many messages uh, that are there in different parts of the world. So the same with the operas. Every uh, element in the opera, which is combined with music, is a symbol. So when you are watching, you have to understand and, and to get that and to read it. And that's related with the emotional center of what we call the super superior emotional center and the intellectual emotional center that enter into activity through meditation, through deep analysis. And for that, of course, you have to be patient in order to learn the, the symbols. And after that, you associate because, uh, as you know, if we combine the Latin letters in Spanish, we can write a book in Spanish. But if an English person that doesn't know how to read Spanish take that book, you won't understand it. But if we combine these letters in the English language, the same message, and then the English person will read it and understand it. Likewise, we need the other language. Mm -hmm. So we will say that every symbol is applied in different ways, as you see, mm -hmm. with the different languages. The same way with the symbols that we find in the operas. They bring a message to the consciousness. And we understand that according to our own level. But we have to pay attention to read the symbols, which are the subtitles, because in this case, uh, this opera that we were watching is uh, uh, sung in, in German. I don't know if uh, any of you here uh, understand German. It will be good. But... Uh, that's why our subtitles don't need to understand what is what they're singing about. Of course, all of that is based in the Bible of Edda. And in that way, when we pay attention and enjoy, like the bee enjoys being in the hive surrounded with honey, or like the fish that enjoys his life when he's swimming in the waters, in the same way, the soul has to enjoy the music like a fish or like a bee in the honey, in the hive. By all, receiving all the waves, seeing what is going on in the opera, and uh, trying to transform that, or we will say to comprehend that, the message. Of course, each one of us has a different level of consciousness and understand every opera in different ways because they are always, uh, according to symbolism, seven levels in which something is written in order to understand it. Seven levels, every symbol. 
And every symbol is divided in 10 levels, Kabbalistically speaking. So it's 7 by 10, like 70 ways of interpret things. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, in our lectures, we always give uh, the level in which we understand it. And we give all the symbols in order for you to comprehend. For instance, this opera, as you see, began, uh, if you remember, with waves, right? And the music is telling us there is waves, there is water there. And of course, uh, every symbol is always interpreted with associations. We as Christians, we remember that the Bible says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was empty and without form, and uh, there was darkness in the bottom of the abyss. And that's why in the beginning you don't see very clear, but you hear the music. And the Bible says, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. So somehow the element water is always in the beginning of any Bible. We always see the water as an as a element, which indeed symbolizes the feminine aspect of divinity. Because from the feminine aspect comes life. And the proof is that I came from the womb of my mother. And each one of us came from the womb of a woman. So physically is proof that everything comes, or every life comes from the feminine aspect. But the masculine is behind it. Because if my father wouldn't put this perm into the album of my mother, this body wouldn't, wouldn't exist. But the feminine aspect is the one that makes the whole work. So that's why you see the element water, which is feminine, in the beginning. And that element water, of course, if we associate that with our physicality, then we understand that uh, it's also associated with our physical body. Because uh, Kabbalistically speaking, uh, the physical body is feminine, whether it is male or female. And uh, if we study the physical body, we discover that it is uh, uh, 90 and something percent water. And you know that. It's where more water than anything. That's why we drink a lot of water in order to help uh, uh, digestion and all the activities that we do. And of course, as we were explaining in other uh, lectures, that... Uh, the solar light, in this case, is a masculine aspect of divinity. When we said, or Hermes Trimegistus says, uh, talking about this mystery of life, he says, its father is the sun, and its mother is the moon. And, and the wind took it in its in his belly in his womb, right? And the earth was his nurse. Took the four elements. So the sun, of course, the solar light, is the father. And we know that because we are telling you that we had to worship the cosmic Christ. That force that the earth takes every day. But there is one element that uh, works with this solar light. And we uh, talked before about this great law, which is a reciprocal nourishment of all cosmic units. And that is a law that is governed by the sun, which is the father, the solar force. Remember that we said that the father and the son are one. It was Master Jesus says, I and the father are one. When he says, I and the father are one, he's referring to Christ, his cosmic presence. So, the mother is the water. 
So in this case, we, physically speaking, are that mater or mother because we are feminine. So the sun has to fecundate us, to impregnate us with life in order for us to multiply all that spirituality that we need to multiply. And that's why do, uh, we perform all of these uh, exercises, always related with the solar energy, which is a cosmic Christ, which is, a, as we are said, a redeemer, which is not a person, but a force. And uh, our goal is to become one with it, as Jesus is one with it, as Krishna is one with it. Because there are many masters that became one with the solar force, the cosmic rise. Not only Jesus, but of course his life uh, represents all the work that we had to do in order to achieve that. This is what we have to understand. So that's why in every type of Gnostic practice, we always uh, work with the attraction of that solar light in order for our matter to be fecundated. Or as the Bible says, in order for the Holy Spirit to fecundate Mary. Uh, Jesus guy is our, our, our matter. That matter, his own essence, is inside of us. Is what we call our divine mother. This divine mother, which is inside of us, is also outside in the universe. And that's the symbol of water. When you read in the Bible that says that the Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters, this is that uh, spirit of force, solar force, that was precisely uh, floating in the waters in order to make light. Because after that it says, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. So this is what in this opera in music is showing us. But then, of course, appear these three maidens. These three maidens there, which are feminine aspect of this force. If you associate that with yourself or with nature, well, you see, it's a feminine aspect. They receive. It says, our father gave us this uh, job, which is to take care of this gold, which is in the waters. In this case, these waters are our own particular waters, which are divided in three aspects. Because as we uh, told you, we have three brains. And we talk about these three brains, we will say there are feminine aspects of the physical body. Because these three brains take impressions, forces, energies, all the time. And that energy is the solar light in different modalities, different levels. That's the gold that uh, the three maidens or the three brains, which the consciousness has to control, have to manage. And this is happening precisely in everybody. The harmony of those three, those three uh, maidens is the harmony of the universe. If they enter in the equilibrium, and then something is being created, whether positive or negative. For instance, in Hinduism, uh, we talk about the three gunas. The guna sattva, which is knowledge. The guna rayas, which is passion. And the guna tamas, which is inertia, related with motion. The three brains. Those three gunas belong to the Divine Mother, to the feminine aspect of creation. And that's why we always insist the physical body is feminine. We have to control the three gunas by controlling the three brains. We have to take care of that gold. That's why the sun is always associated with gold. Remember the name of uh, the King Soliman or Solomon. Soli man means the man sun. And uh, when he was incarnated uh, at that time in the Middle East, uh, his main power was gold. He has a lot of gold. That, but that gold also symbolizes wisdom and, and the solar energy. 
that we had to gather, to collect. It is what we, uh, we're trying to do, and we want to do. But of course, there's an, an element there, as you saw in the opera, but it is a dwarf, which is a, a toad, and that is very tricky, which is the ego, unfortunately. In our own particular creation, the ego is there. And he's trying to seduce the three mightings, the three brains. But at the end, he succeeds. He's trying to do it, to take that goal in a positive way, but he cannot. And then he curses love. And that love, of course, is the same energy that we saw there. He steals the gold. And it's what the ego does. He steals the gold of our spirit in order to make a ring and to acquire power. And this is precisely what happened with us. The ego now, in this very moment, in each one of us, has a lot of power. But that power comes from the gold that is taken from the three brains. And uh, now the soul, which is also in this, uh, in this way, symbolizes the feminine aspect of us, which is also called, uh, uh, for instance, in the Gnostic Bible, Pistis Sophia, the soul in us, exclaiming for that power that she lost. It's our soul. And of course, enters into activity this uh, great uh, uh, coach, master, instructor, that is always uh, in the middle of this creation. And that in the Latin is called Lucifer, in Hebrew is called Shatan, and that here in this opera is called Loge, which is the spirit of fire. That fire, of course, is inside of us, too. And somehow, uh, he made some deals there in the upper parts of the being. Because the second aspect of this opera, you go then to Valhalla, the place of the gods, which is other dimensions. And this is precisely what we saw in the second part of the opera that after the dwarf, is uh, uh, that ego is stealing the, the gold and making a ring with it, he goes down into hell, into the infra dimensions. Klipoth is called in Kabbalah, inferno. Meanwhile, Lucifer, that is the one that is in the middle of everything, goes up and informs, uh, as you see, Wotan, which is the father of, all, of the gods, which in this card represents Keter, in Kabbalah. And the two other gods that appear there, which are male, the one with the hammer, is what we call the Holy Spirit. And the other one is the sun, that we call Chokmah. Then appears Freya, which is the goddess of love. Do you see there? That energy of love is also when something happens in the bottom here in the earth, something is also happening there in heaven. Because we are the inferior part of the superior part of the being. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, is there. But we are here. And uh, he expects that we are going to take care of the, of the gold. Meanwhile, the gold is already stolen. The mines are there in the water, but there's no gold. And if there's a gold more that attracted by, by, the, by the three brains, the ego takes it and makes more in treasure in hell. And this is precisely what we are now. We are uh, having a lot of treasures in hell. And we fight for that. Of course, the other part of the opera is uh, the activity of the giants, which are these individuals that uh, know about this type of knowledge. But they work, of course, uh, uh, not yet as human beings, but they are doing it. And the whole world that they are doing, as we are doing it, is for the gods, it's for our own God. And that's that they build that big castle. Like we, when we enter into this knowledge, 
we start working very hard, building inside of ourselves a lot of uh, uh, elements that we need. And at the end, uh, we expect, I say, well, <clears throat> now I want to see where is my clairvoyance? Where, where are my powers? I want to see them, right? So they demand, of course, the power of the gods is in the, are, are, are in the hands of uh, Freya, the goddess of love, which is that uh, uh, beautiful goddess that takes care of a garden that uh, every apple tree gives golden apples. You see again the, the golden color of the sun, which is a solar light. And the gods feed themselves with those apples. But somehow, of course, uh, in the beginning when we start doing this work, we become giants of knowledge. And we want our reward, our payment. And we want Freya, of course, that will give us immortality. But imagine devils as we are, immortals. If we are dangerous, being mortals, now imagine if we receive that gift of immortality with the ego alive inside of us, it will be terrible, right? Immortal demons that will live forever. Or well, as the Bible says, oh, they ate from the fruit. Now let us keep them out of eating because if they take from the fruit of life, they will live forever. If they want to live forever, well, they have to annihilate those elements that have within, which is that ego. And then, as you saw, this is a battle between the gods and those giants that want to receive their payment. And finally, Lucifer enters into activity in order to trick the giants which is actually what happened with us. When we are in this path, Lucifer enters into activity because that is a part of God that knows how to deal with us. It's the only part that can come and know what, what are we doing. Hmm? So he has to deal with us and to tempt us in order for us to know ourselves and to walk in this path. And that's why this uh, uh, Loge, which is uh, Lucifer in this opera, is always acting in a very weird way right? in order to work in favor of Watson, the father of all gods there. But of course, the other parts of God always protest because nobody knows how Lucifer works. Nobody. Because only he knows how the ego is, how the giants are, and how the, this dwarf is. And all that are parts of ourselves. And in synthesis, as you see, everything is written there in order for us to see, in order to teach us what is what we have within, what we have to do. And this is uh, uh, the beauty of, uh, of opera. Of course, unfortunately, in this day, in this day and age, uh, people that do not know anything about esotericism are making these operas in a very horrible manner. Uh, there are many versions of this opera now where these gods appear like uh, beggars or, or like bikes, uh, riders, uh, many other operas, and, and they are modernized, yeah. so bad. And it's because the ones that are doing that, they want just to impress or to bring people into their theaters without knowing what the opera means. And somebody was telling me, for instance, that uh, in, uh, it's an aversion where these maidens appear like uh, three horse, trying to seduce a, 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 a beggar that is, this, uh, the, that is precisely the, the dwarf. And uh, they don't appear in this beautiful scenario, but... Uh, in the California, what? El Reservoir. <laughs> and all that, you know, that's really laughable, right? And like that, uh, they, have, they are destroying the whole work of the great uh, uh, art uh, uh, musicians, you know? And it's because they don't know. So it's very sad to see that uh, the pure element are being lost. Unfortunately, I mean, fortunately, 
the music is still there. And the message, as in this beautiful uh, work that was made in New York by the uh, James Levine. Very good. And thank goodness we have that. So do you have questions? Exactly. You good to mention that because this is a, a stone there where the gold is on top and that has a form of a phallus. Right? That is very clear that uh, that fire or that uh, gold is within the waters of creation. But remember that uh, when we talk about the waters of creation, we always think only in the sexual organs. But in reality, those creative waters are in the three brains because the three myrens are taking care of it. And that water, which is in, indeed energy in the three brains, but uh, the main power is sex. That's why when the dwarf realizes that, he goes on top of that big phallus and steals the gold, and then the myrens remain without power. Hmm? He renounces love. He says the only way to take that is by renouncing love. Well, there's two ways, right? He renounces divine love, but for the smart observant, he will say it, or the observer, the way to renounce love is passional love, animal love, in order to get the goal. That's the right way. But when you don't know uh, the doctrine, you take that goal in the wrong way or what we call in the back tantra way, the black tantric wisdom, in which they steal that fire, but for the ego. We have to steal it, but for the spirit. But since uh, everybody is still here, here in their own way, this is how the opera show it, right? That the ego have it, instead of uh, Walton having the gold, and now he wants to recuperate the gold. Well, the whole story is pretty long. So four operas. Here we are only seeing the first one. Today we are going to see the third and the fourth part of the first one, which is called the Rhine Gold. If we have time tomorrow, maybe we will see part of the second uh, opera, which is called the Valkyrie. That maybe some of you already heard. And after that comes Siegfried. And after those come. Uh, Got the dumber. Therefore, you need uh, one week in order to see the whole thing. And with a lot of patience, you cannot see that in one day. It's very tiring, especially when you are not accustomed to classical music, but very enjoyable when you love it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the sphere inside him has given time to see so far that the sphere is out of hand. I mean, the sphere is outside of that equation still in this world. Right? That's what he said. Yeah, of course. Is there, and it is because, really, uh, the whole work that is done there is by, in this case, by us. Right? In the case, we, we become the giants right? because we are doing that job. But the one that receives the benefit of anything that we do here is the being up there. Hmm? But it is a mixture of mistakes and errors, etc., that we have to overcome. Because uh, we, we are explaining all of this. I don't want to go deeper into it because it implies a lot for those that know already the knowledge and are working in it. So it has a lot of information, as I said. It depends how you organize the letters in order to read English or Spanish or French or Italian, you're right? So the way that you organize that according to your level of being, then you receive more message.
and uh, let us nurture our emotional center. Do you have any other question? Yes. It's part of our ego. Okay. The thing is that uh, first we have the, the lower part, which are the black tantrism related with the dwarf, right? That they know how to work with alchemy, which means with the fire, etc., and with the gold, but in the wrong way. Hmm? And you will see there that they appear there doing the, their job. But the giants are dumb, like we are dumb. We are trying to rise, you know, and build this, but still we are not as smart as those that are down there. <laughs> right? But we have to develop that. Mm -hmm. And we have to annihilate those, uh, those giant parts of ourselves as well, which are a mixture because they are on the service of God, as we are. But still we have different uh, uh, type of vices and errors inside of us. And as giants, we have to die. Remember that the Bible talks about that too. When Adam started to multiply in, in that time, there were giants on the earth. Those giants are precisely those individuals that strive emerging from that knowledge. And the problem is that if those giants don't, do not work in themselves completely, and then are, we find a double polarity which in esotericism is called Hanasmusen, which is double polarity. Out there, with the solar bodies, with all the buildings uh, constructed by, for the gods, that the gods are using, but down here, they are still ugly because they have still ego. And that brings me into memory a sad story, of course, in, in 1976, when the, the Master Samael was examining certain disciples for, from him, uh, that from Colombia and Venezuela, that he started teaching them, because the Master started teaching this knowledge in 1946 in Colombia. He started having a lot of disciples. So 1946 to 1976 is a space of 30 years. And he said at that time, I have observed many students that have 30 years in Gnosis. But they still are the same. They handle the doctrine. They know about, they are transmuting, they are building, but they still have the same egos that they had when they were not Gnostics. Obviously, they are those giants. So therefore, he says, the only thing that I see from Venezuela and Colombia is a harvest of Hannah's Musen. Unfortunately. And he was referring, of course, to those 30 years of those old disciples that uh, all of them appear after his death with different groups. And... Uh, his prophecy was fulfilled because there's a lot of groups now coming from Venezuela and Colombia for those Hannah's Musen that the master warned. And the funny thing is, at that time, of course, I was a, a newly disciple, the master, right? And I was listening to what he was saying. And people were not understanding what he was saying. When he said a harvest of Hannah's Musen, I said, oh my goodness, this is bad. Double polarity, right? But the Colombians and Venezuelans, we were many, instead of being worried, they were applauding. Yeah, like something good. <laughs> I said, hello, <laughs> don't you realize what is going on here? They was applauding because, you know, the masters, you know, strong voice, right? So let us not uh, us fall into the same mistake. If we build, let us annihilate the ego too. Because we will be in the same danger if we don't annihilate the ego. Uh, what was your question? Uh, 
Well, that implies a lot. That's why I advise you to buy the revolutionary psychology, the girl rebellion, and the revolutionary dialectic. And that question brings me precisely uh, uh, a memory of something that happened to me. Because uh, I understood that the main thing here is to annihilate the ego. Because to build, well, it's not that easy. But it's easier than to destroy the ego. Because it implies a lot of meditation, concentration, and all that which we are learning here. But at that time, I was desperate in order to know the way, right, to know how to annihilate my ego. And in those meditations that I was uh, concentrating in the Master Samael, because between parentheses, I met him in internal planes before I met him physically. And then I was at the very bottom of a mountain, and he was coming down from the high mountain down in order to meet me. And of course, it was a, a, a great lesson for me because to show me where he was and where I was. And then he approached me, and when he saw me there, he told me these things. There in my book, Revolutionary Psychology, I wrote all of that that you need in order to die. You know, it's boring. It's okay. <laughs> so, in that book, you will find the didactic, really. And after that, of course, he wrote The Great Rebellion and The Revolution of Dialectic. But at that time, only that. And when you read that book, it really is the guidance. So that book is the answer. And of course, all the techniques uh, in meditation that we are learning here in order to apply it. That's it. Exactly, but they're greedy. Slow guy said, listen, you don't want to harm what you told me. You said it loud enough so they don't hear it. That's more the power of the world. Exactly. Oh, and this is pretty... Exchange life, eternal life, for this power that's on the earth. Exactly. And this is precisely what happened with Hanad Muzin. They identify with the earth, with the power of gold in the earth. And thinking that because they will be powerful here, they will be powerful in heaven. Mm -mm. Exactly. But uh, deep down, they know that the gold gives them power. Because they know, it says, oh, the dwarfs have the gold, which means the black magicians. So if we get that ring, we will get the power. It is just a fight for power, which is usually always happen in any religion. Mm -hmm. Always power. To acquire that power in this earth, for what? At the end we die? As it happened there, as we will see. <laughs> they die, they don't get anything. Mm -hmm. Because the power is always in the hands of God. So that's why we have to learn. Not to be greedy here. And for that we have to annihilate the ego. Because that's... Is, uh, is very subtle and sly. But remember that the help is Lucifer, Loge, the spirit of fire. Any other question? Yeah. Well, yeah. Lucifer, as you see there, is always under the service of, of the god Watan, which is Loge. Yeah. Lucifer is the only part of our being that can go down to hell and up to heaven and to inform. If the being receives uh, there, it says, oh, this is a great uh, being, or this great initiate is doing positive things. And then says, let me see if it's right. And then he calls Lucifer. What do you think about Job? Uh, does that right? Is the needs good? And then he says, well, give it to me, and I will tempt you, and I will tell you. It really is good. And he says, okay, it's in your hands. And he descends. He says, us. 
and start tempting us. So you are good, eh? And you start tempting this way and this way and this other way. And if we fail, he says, mm -mm, it's not good. But if we succeed like these masters, like Jesus, for instance, succeeded the temptations in the beginning of Lucifer. And later on, he was tempting, tempting until he died completely on the cross and succeeded dying himself. So Lucifer failed there. But not all of us like to die on the cross. Right? It's painful. But we should die on the cross if we want to go to heaven. Because after the crucifixion comes the resurrection. The resurrection doesn't come if you don't die. First you die, then you resurrect. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Thank you.